Just a few years ago, HTC was the king of Android phones. Now, as it reveals the One N8, its future is much less certain. Adventures in Tech examines the rise and fall of HTC. With the One M8 now taking centre stage, it's easy to forget that HTC began out of the spotlight, making unbranded mobiles for the likes of Orange, HP and O2 to slap their label on. Plenty of these phones were well received, and after several years, HTC started making mobiles that actually bore its logo. A landmark moment came in 2008, when HTC built the T-Mobile G1, the very first Android phone, a quirky mobile with a blocky chin that would make Judge Dredd blush. The following year we got the Hero which introduced the Sense UI. HTC was experienced at tweaking operating systems and Sense filled Android with extra features and widgets, smoothing over Android's rough edges. Sense also featured HTC's famous clock widget which tells you what the weather's like where you are. I've never really understood the appeal of that one. Hey, excuse me, I'm oh, sorry. What? Uh, do you know what the weather's like? <laughs> Oh, no, that's fine. I'm sorry! No, honestly, it's fine. Uh, I guess we'll never know. Cheers. Bye. Have you seen my family? 2010 saw a streak of major hits, including the US's first 4G phone and the very first Nexus device. By the end of the year, HTC had sold 24.6 million phones, cementing its position as the king of Android. The Editor's Choice Awards poured in, and so did the cash. In 2011, HTC went for even bigger, chunkier phones. It didn't feel like anything would stop the HTC train, but then something stopped the HTC train. Samsung had been slow off the mark with its own Android devices, but didn't lie dormant for long, producing the Galaxy S2 in 2011, a smartphone that was both shockingly powerful and extremely thin and light. Almost overnight, HTC's mobiles started to feel bulky by comparison. As if that wasn't enough, Google was busy supercharging Android, 2011 saw the leap from gingerbread to the futuristic ice cream sandwich, followed up by Jelly Bean a mere nine months later. HTC Sense started as an improvement on Android, but was quickly becoming less relevant. A turning point came in spring 2012 when both HTC and Samsung revealed new flagship phones. The slender One X made a good impression, but was steamrolled by the glossy Galaxy S3, which launched not only to orchestral fanfare, but a lavish Olympic ad campaign. In short, the S3 broke the One X, like Carthaginian general Hannibal shattered the Roman legions at the Battle of the Trebia. Look, we can do it if we green screen the river and the Numidian cavalry, we have the Romans played by extras, bout a thousand, lots of catering, then on my signal the animal handlers release the war elephants across the river for the big climax and scene. We can't afford this. Nah! As Samsung's fortunes rose, HTC's fell. Samsung doesn't just make mobiles, and its massive size gave it a huge advantage in both assembling phones and marketing them. Production problems and new rivals made HTC's situation worse, and in 2013 the company revealed it was losing money for the first time in its history, even as Samsung boasted of record profits. In the clutches of catastrophe, HTC has revealed the One M8 a phone that needs to make a big impression. The M8 looks gorgeous and has some really cool camera features, but then producing compelling hardware has never been a problem for HTC. Instead, it's the presence of powerful, much larger rivals that's making things tough for this small phone maker, and Apple and Samsung aren't going anywhere. Can HTC make a comeback? And what do you think of the One M8? Let me know and check back next time for another adventure in tech.